Hello. In today's module, I will be teaching you about the 14 principles of management and a very easy way to remember it. But first, let us know who gave these 14 principles. It was given by Henri Fiol, a French mining engineer. He is also considered as the father of administrative management. Now, it gets difficult sometimes to remember all the 14 principles, so an easy way to remember it is by using the mnemonic where a child is asking his dad, Dad, you see USSR? And the dad says, Oh, I see. Now, let's see what are the 14 principles that we can use using these mnemonic. D of the dad stands for division of work. The A stands for authority and responsibility. D stands for discipline. That makes dad. Now let's see what does U stand for. U stands for unity of command. C stands for centralization and decentralization. U stands for unity of direction. S stands for scalar chain. S stands for stability of tenure. R stands for remuneration. O stands for order, I stands for initiative, S stands for subordination of individual interest to general interest, E stands for equity and the last E stands for esprit de corps and that makes the 14 principles of management. Dad, you see USSR, O, I see. Now let's see each principle in a little detail and try and understand these 14 principles. So let's start with the first principle, which is division of work. Now this principle suggests that total work should be subdivided into small parts. Now in this picture, you can see that a manager is asking his subordinates to do different work. That is, he has allocated different work or divided the work into different subordinates depending on their expertise. Now each part of the work according to this principle, should be allocated who is expert in that area of work. Now, what will that lead to? It will lead to specialization. It will also help in less wastage and it will reduce the risk of getting the work not done. Now, let's see the second principle, which is authority and responsibility. Here in this picture, you can see that the manager is making the subordinate responsible as well as giving him some authority to do the work. It is very important to give authority and response along with the responsibility and the subordinate will be accountable to the manager. But first let's understand what is the meaning of authority. Authority means power to take decisions and responsibility it means obligation to complete the assigned job on time. Authority comes from official as well as personal factors. Now let's first see what are the official factors. So official authority, it comes from the manager's position. That is the position in which the manager is there. Now personal authority also plays a role in the authority part. And that comes from qualities like intelligence, experience, moral worth and past services. So, authority is comprised of official authority as well as personal authority. Authority without responsibility, it will result in irresponsible behavior. And responsibility without authority, it will make people very ineffective. So, both, the, both responsibility and authority, they must go together. Now, let's see the third principle, which is discipline. Discipline is obedience, application, energy, behavior and respect shown by the employees. Now, it is also of two types. It can be self-imposed, that is, it comes from within the individual or the person. On this note, there is a very beautiful quote given, that is, discipline is doing what you know needs to be done, even when you don't want it to do, you don't want to do it. So, that makes self-imposed discipline. Another type of discipline is command discipline. And where does command discipline come from? It comes from some authority expressed through rules, regulations and customs. Now all the personnel or all the employees serving in the organization, 
they should be disciplined according to this principle given by Henry Fayol. Now let's see the fourth principle which is unity of command. It means that a person should get orders or instructions from one superior only. An individual cannot serve two bosses at the same time. You can see in this picture that the right approach towards unity of command is having one boss that is the red dot represents a boss and the green dots represent the subordinates. But in the wrong approach you can see there are two bosses that is there are two red dots and they are giving their orders to the subordinates which can cause confusion, it can lead to misunderstandings and it can lead to conflicts. So unity of command is very important in an organization. The fifth principle is unity of direction. As you can see in the picture, each group of activities with the same objective, they must have one head and one plan. Unity of command, it talks about reporting relationship of the personnel at all levels. But unity of direction, it talks about functioning of organization in terms of grouping of activities. So one head and one plan is the reason for unity of direction. Now let's see the sixth principle which is subordination of individual interest to general interest. Interest of the organization should take priority over individual interest. It is very important to fulfill the organizational objectives first, organizational goals first and then think about your individual interest. If individuals and organizational interest are different then it is the responsibility of the managers to try and convince the subordinates and to try and reconcile all of the objectives together. If not, then the individual interest, it, they need to be sacrificed for the benefit of the organization. Factors like laziness, ambition, selfishness, carelessness, etc. tend to reduce the organizational interest and they tend to increase the individual interest. So, subordination of individual interest to general interest is very important. Now let's see the seventh principle which is remuneration. Now it is very important in every organization to take care of the remuneration of the employees. It should be fair, it should be reasonable and it should be satisfactory. It should provide maximum satisfaction to employees and at the same time even to the employers. This satisfaction will lead to increase in employee turnover. So every organization should take care of the remuneration of their employees. The eighth principle is centralization and decentralization. Let us understand these two terms first. Centralization means that when everything which goes to increase the importance of subordinates, then it is known as decentralization. And everything which goes to decrease the importance of subordinates role, it is known as centralization. Now let us try and understand it better using this image. As you can see in this picture, there are uh, two parts. The first part represents the decentralized organization and the last part represents the centralized organization. In the first part, you can see that there is a company producing game products and we can see the president of the company. Now, since the company is large, it requires a decentralized organization and so they have three different subordinates or three different managers reporting to the president and they are the managers of three different divisions that is the first manager uh, takes care of the sporting goods division the second manager takes care of the board game division and the third manager he takes care of the computer games division now since the organization is large and the president cannot take care of the entire uh, uh, diff games division so she requires three different managers to take care of the three divisions and then report back to her about the progress of the organization. So here the president has given the authority and responsibility to three, these three managers and hence it has important, uh, important role of the subordinates and so it is a decentralized organization. But in the second case you can see that it is a centralized organization where the president herself is taking care of the sports goods division, the board games divisions and also the computer games division. It might be that the organization is uh, a small organization and the president is able to take care of all the three components. And so it has reduced the role of the employees or the subordinates. And so 
it is a centralized organization. And in smaller firms, centralization is usually observed. And in case of large firms where it is not possible to take care of the entire uh, organization by the president himself or herself, then we require a series of intermediaries and here we require decentralization. Now the degree of decentralization or centralization varies due to the character of the manager, the moral worth, his moral worth and reliability towards uh, the subordinates also the condition of the business and what condition the business is. Now let's see the ninth principle which is scalar chain. Now there should be a scalar chain of authority and of communication ranging from the highest to the lowest level and this was specified by Henry Fayol. Now you can see in this particular picture that A is the boss in the organization followed by his subordinates B and N, followed by their subordinates C and M and so on. Now if A has to communicate something within the organization, he will communicate it to A, B or L and then B will communicate it to C, C will communicate it to D and so on. And here L will communicate to M, M will communicate to N and so on. And if F supposedly want to communicate something to A, he first has, has to communicate it to E, E has to communicate to D, D has to communicate to C and so on and that is how it will reach A. So it becomes very lengthy and it becomes very tedious at times and there are certain contingencies or problems sometimes where we cannot follow this particular scalar chain. So Henry Fayol, he devised a mechanism known as gang plank or a bridge between the two employees, supposedly F and P, where they can directly contact each other and talk to each other or discuss the issue with each other and report to their immediate uh, boss, that is E and O. So each, according to scalar chain, each communication going up or coming down must flow through each position in the line of authority. Now, Fayol, he suggested the concept of gangplank where the scalar chain, it can be short-circuited in special cases where rigid following of the scalar chain can get detrimental to the organization. So it is important to remember that gangplank, the concept of gangplank was given by Henry Fayol in the case of scalar chain. Now let's see the next principle which is the 10th pill principle which is order. Now this principle it relates to the arrangement of things and as well as people. Now there should be a place for everything and everything should be in place according to this principle. Likewise right man should be in the right place. Bigger the organization more difficult is the order. Now let's move to the next principle which is equity. But before explaining the principle equity, it is very important to understand what is the difference between equity and equality. Let's have a look at this image. Here you can see that there are three boys who would like to enjoy a match, but there are the height of all the three boys, it is very different. The first boy is tall enough, the second does not have a good height, but he can still watch the match and the third one is a short one. Now if equality is followed, then all the three boys will be at the same level. But as we can see that the first boy does not require this particular level or a heighted level. He can watch the match even without this level. But And the third one, that is a small boy, he is still not able to watch the match in spite of the level that has been provided to him. So equality sometimes does not work in an organization and it is not possible to treat all the employees equally for their benefit or for the organizational benefit. So it is important to follow equity, wherein you can see that the tall boy has given his uh, level to the short boy and now all the three boys are able to watch the match. So equity is a combination of justice as well as kindness. It is equity in treatment and behavior it is liked by everyone and it brings loyalty to the organization. Now, it is very important to understand its application because equity can only be applied when you have a good sense, when you have some kind of experience and you have good nature. So that was the concept of equity and how is it different from equality? Let's see the 12th principle which is stability of tenure. As you can see, that no employee should be removed 
within short time because if you remove an employee in the very short time he does not get enough time to understand the organization its objectives its goals and so stability of tenure is very important there should be a reasonable security of job which should be provided to every employee unnecessary turnover or unnecessary removal of employees is very bad for the organization and stability of tenure is important to get employees accustomed to new work and succeed in doing well let's see the 13th uh, principle which is initiative managers should encourage their subordinates to take initiative that is to take lead and within it should be within the limits of authority and in the limits of discipline initiative is concerned with thinking out an executive execution of a plan it encourages energy and zeal within the subordinates and so managers should encourage initiative let's now look at the 14th and the last principle that is esprit de corps now esprit de corps is a french word which means union is strength or team spirit the managers must always encourage esprit de corps among his employees because no individual employee can survive or do or be beneficial for the organization it is always the team effort or the group effort so every employee in the organization must consider himself as a part of a team and try to achieve the team goal because team contribution is always better than individual contribution it basically follows the synergistic effect i hope you enjoyed this video and thank you for watching please like share and subscribe if you liked or understood the principles the 14 principles of management and if you think that it was a very easy way to learn it